it's great uh, that we can host this uh, second conference on uh, game design. Uh, we did the first one last year and it was a great, a big success for all of us. Uh, I personally learned so much about gaming last year here and uh, so I became more enthusiastic and I, I could be convinced by my son, who is nine, that, that he has now a PlayStation and uh, uh, I'm really interested in what he is doing there. Um, and so I'm part of, of the uh, booming gaming industry with my own family. Uh, as you know, the industry has uh, advanced to become a very fast-growing market and one of the most prestigious uh, entertainment disciplines. And having fun is the most essential, I think, uh, the most essential aspect in the, uh, playing games. Fun is located on the bright side of life. Fun makes life enjoyable and it can help us to forget. Fun makes us learning more effective and fun creates quality time of life. So good g games make more fun. More fun means also better business. So the gaming industry is a rapid growing industry based on fast changing innovations. But that means on the other side, it's also full of high risk. You have a, a, a typical market with high risk and high gains. If you're successful, you can make a fortune, uh, but you must be also in several cases very lucky to be successful. But this is the challenge. And here comes design into the game. Thomas Watson Jr., the IBM CEO, once said good design is good business. And he knew what he was talking about. When he took over IBM, um, he was focusing on two things. The one thing was research and development, research business, and the other thing was design. So he employed a designer and gave him all the freedom to engage other designers, architects, graphic designers, you know, all Paul Wren, maybe who did the IBM logo. All the, the big design guys were working for IBM in these times, and they helped to uh, create the big success of IBM. <clears throat> So good design also can help in the gaming industry to be more successful. Uh, <clears throat> there has been developed, of course, a kind of aesthetics in gaming already right now. Uh, so far as I can see, this, many, many aspects of this kind of aesthetics are based on, tech, on the uh, uh, technology behind it. You know, when you do some char characters, you are not able, if you are not able in the beginning to make them very real, then you start to, to make them in a, in a very uh, a unique, aesthetic way. Uh, and by doing this, you create, or the, the game designers create a new kind of uh, artificial reality. But I'm not sure whether there is already a real discussion or real understanding of the meaning of design in the gaming industry. So what can design really affect in, in, in gaming by developing games? What kind of, of good design criteria are uh, necessary in this, in this field? When I, uh, when I talk about design and people ask me what is, what is good design for you, we always differentiate between four qualities of design. And I think we could use this kind of qualities uh, to check games as well, whether they fulfill this or not. So there is f at first the quality of function. Of course, every game has to function. If it doesn't function, it doesn't make fun. It's not good. But on the other side, function does not say that the game is really exciting. You know, there are so many things in our life which have a good function, but uh, they are not exciting enough. So the second quality we need is seduction. You must really fall in love with something. You must really like it. You must want it. And this is <clears throat> another point of how to create an aesthetic, but also the interface, also the interaction. And this is the third quality, is the quality of the usability. 
So there is a big difference between function and usability. Function is on the side of the machine, function is on the side of the object, and usability is on the side of the user. The way we can make use out of it. If it is simple, uh, if you can uh, learn a game very simple, and if you have success very easily with the game, it makes more fun, of course. And this is, at the end, it's also a question of design. And the final quality we talk about is responsibility. And I mean responsibility in a more social cultural sense. You know, you can make unresponsible games, but you can also create uh, games with a, with a social impact or with cultural impact. And uh, I think this should be part of the designing process. So the subject of our conference today is defined game design. Uh, I have no idea what comes out at the end, but I'm really uh, interested in, in, in listening to your presentations. I'm really glad that we uh, have Daniel Budiman again uh, as today's facilitator. And uh, he also was a Red Dot judge this year and helped us to find good games, good designed games. Um, and so I have to thank Daniel that he makes it today again. And I also like to thank all the speakers. We have very renowned international speakers here. Thank you all that for coming and uh, helping us to understand what dame, game design could be about. So enjoy the day, have fun by Define Game Design. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Dr. Peter Seitz. Um, I was never uh, introduced as a facilitator. That's right, facili that sounds really good. I'm Daniel Budiman, I'm a facilitator. Uh, I'm your facilitator for today. So um, uh, again, thank you very much for everyone to be here and to join in at this topic, at this day's What's that means? Should I stay here? What? Yeah, all right. I'm a really good facilitator. There's a problem with PowerPoint. All right. So this is bad uh, game design from PowerPoint, actually. So we started that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. So what's the topic about defined game design? Well, actually, um, I know a few guys from you, and uh, a few of you study game design itself. We have uh, Linda here as a professor for game design as well. There are lots of stuff. Uh, evolving right now about game studies, game design itself, and uh, many players out there, um, as it sounds for me, um, we know we, we just play games and try to analyze for ourselves whether a game is good or not. So, and uh, this is what we want to talk about today. So, it is about defining game design, and maybe we will find some kind of conclusion. So, first, uh, as again, I'm Daniel Budiman, I'm a facilitator. And uh, I started back in the days when I was seven as a facilitator. Actually, I just played uh, the <laughs> Commodore 64. This is my sister, she's over there. So we played uh, a lot of Commodore 64 and uh, just a short story. Um, my, our, our elder brother, uh, he used to give us certain rules um, then we were allowed to play. So we learned the harder way to play. <laughs> One rule was uh, for me to uh, get rid of my baby tooth. So actually, you know, maybe the, the kind of, when you get a, uh, your baby tooth out and you smash a door, I did it with that joystick, actually. So I was sitting there <laughs> and playing California games. Um, I shouldn't tell you that. <coughs> okay, so what I'm uh, usually do, um, I do some stuff in the media, which is called Game One, just for instance. So, and just a short example, I told you about my brother. This is my brother. Ich krieg sonst nie ein Spiel. Du hast schon Saints Row gekriegt. Saints Row is the GTA! This is just a short example of what we do, actually. We take a game, and then we think about, okay, what's the <laughs> deal behind the game, and then we fight. And then uh, we use certain other software uh, that is available right now to produce stuff and talk about the game. So actually we talk about GTA. And um, as you can see, we can fight really good. <coughs> so, but this is something, and I will explain why I'm showing you this. Uh, this is something which um, makes sense for me in terms of the topic today, which is playing stuff, meaningful play, using certain tools to create something new out of Nothing. Whether this is sensible or not, or funny or not. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, just a short example <laughs> of what we do at Game One. So, um, 
we love playing, playing games. We love to play with uh, software. We love to play with certain programs and stuff like that. So let's get back to the topic, define game design. All right, this is what we want to express. And I'm not an academic, I'm a facilitator. So please don't get me wrong, okay? So uh, the first thing, um, what I do, I check the internet. Okay, define game design. So maybe someone really clever, maybe academics, they posted on Wikipedia the definition of game design. So, and what they did uh, in terms of Wikipedia, game design is the design of games. Thank you very much for coming here. So actually, we have our conclusion for today. Um, <laughs> okay, now, let's uh, get specific and let's try. Um, uh, Mr. Zitz, Professor Zitz, you started to kind of uh, tell us four qualities of design itself. So actually, I checked the internet again. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> I tried to get more into detail of the de definition of design itself. And there are lots of discussions about it. So what I found was design is the creation of a plan or convention for the construction of an object or a system. Would you suggest that's okay? You could say that, okay. <laughs> okay. So, all right, so this is kind of a definition of design itself. Okay, is there a definition of games? Yes, there is, and uh, actually this is from Katie Salen and Eric Zimmerman, who is here today and who will speak out uh, uh, the keynote. I'm really lucky about that. So, what they said was, a game is a system in which players engage in an artificial conflict defined by rules, which is really important, that results in a quantifiable outcome. Okay, so, if we take both of this together and we add them, and if and only if we say that the system is the same and the system is a set of interacting or interdependent components forming an integrated whole, then, so this is what I learned from math, this will come out as a de definition. Game design is the creation of a plan or convention for the construction of a system in which players engage in an artificial conflict defined by rules that results in a quantifiable outcome. Yesterday when I wrote this, I felt quite clever, but now I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> But somehow it kind of fits to what we try to understand of game design itself. So just to uh, give you an example, I said that game design for me personally is everything. Game design, you can make a game out of everything, just everything. Just like, and I give you a short example, um, Knäckebrot. You can make a, play, a game out of Knäckebrot, crisp bread, uh, that's the English term for that. I'm going to show you just a short example of what we did with Knäckebrot. Again, um, uh, <laughs> we're not academics back in Hamburg. So this is just a short competition actually, so a game we played, all right? So this is the intro and um, this is the third round from, well, three rounds actually, so this is the final round, all right? And uh, what we did is um, we just said we play Spin Shot. That's the name for the game. This is my brother again. And the rules are really simple. So you just have to turn a spin around 10 times, then hit the Knäckebrot, then redeploy a bottle on the table, and then stop the timer. So this is a war or a fight or a competition from everyone itself against the time. Uh, he ate lots of uh, pea soup before, so he was afraid of something. <laughs> Actually, he don't know that I'm gonna show this. My sister is, is, is laughing really hard right now, internally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah he, he hears someone laughing in the background, so yes. I'm gonna explain why I'm showing you this <laughs> later on. <laughs> okay. So there are three other guys. Uh, <laughs> there are three other guys coming. I don't know if you want to see more of them. It's, it's getting bad and, and worse, actually, so... Okay. Everyone is taking this really serious, so we are more the compet competitive guys. So and as you can see, I chose another strategy by turning around, you know? But I forgot a very important rule. I didn't redeploy the bottle on the table, so I was actually disqualified. Let's show you the next one because he's really funny, and uh, actually, uh, everyone was surprised. This is Simon, a mate of mine, and um, okay. everyone was surprised that the building we play, used to play this game is still standing because uh, he has got his kind of a superpower. He can destroy everything by just being. Okay. And as you can see, uh, his skill is not that good <laughs> in, in spinning. But again, 1237, um, it's not that bad. Okay, why have I shown you that? Um, yeah, I have. Why? <laughs> Just why? <laughs> 
Um, and I want to explain you why I showed you this. Uh, there is this book, which is kind of uh, my first impression of kind of an academic way to find out what game design is about. And uh, this is from Katie Sen and Eric Zimmerman, again, they are the authors of this book, Rules of Play, design, uh, Game Design Fundamentals. And um, to just give you a little glimpse, uh, just, uh, you know, I want to scratch the surface, is uh, that there are three primary schemes that uh, could be kind of um, useful to explain what game design is all about. As I said, this is just, you know, the surface. There are rules, actually, which are really, they are key for every game design. Then there's play, and then there's something around which is called culture. So the game design uh, students of you, I think you will know this already. So, and again, this is just the surface. Rules contains formal game design schemes, play contains experiential game design schemes, and culture contains contextual game design schemes. So those are the primary schemes, and from that, a lot of million certain other schemes are kind of uh, behind that. So, compared this connected board thing, which you've seen before, to that. I'm going to say, so, our rules were really simple. Four players have each one attempt. Each player plays against their own time. Start the timer, spin ten times, and you could be freely in that. So you could, you know, just stand on one feet, or you can do it with, like, Simon, and just fell on the ground. Destroy the connected board with the bottle, redeploy the bottle on the table, and then stop the timer. Those were the rules, okay? Then, play, and then we got uh, Roger Calois, and he said those are maybe four kind of quantities you said before in terms of def in the definition of design. Roger Calois, he's a literary critic, a philosopher, and uh, a sociolog sociologist, uh, not a facilitator. <coughs> and um, uh, again, this is uh, um, from Eric's, Eric's uh, book, Rules of Play. Uh, he explained four kind of mainly ludic activities. So we got Eigen, we got Alea, Mimicry, and Illings. And uh, compared to our competition, what, did we, uh, what have we seen? Eigen, which is, uh, this is really um, kind of clear, so it is a competition. So everyone against each other. So Alea, a chance-based play. So there is a certain possibility while playing the game to fail, or maybe my brother ate a lot of pea soup before, so there was kind of a chance that it's not going well and stuff like that. Mimicry, we were all playing nine-year-olds playing this game, not, you know, 30-year-olds we used to play. And Illings, and that's kind of the main point, this is what we played. This is just, you know, the physical sensation we got by turning around and trying to hit the knacker board. <coughs> okay. And the culture, just to give you a really kind of uh, uh, far out surfaced uh, example. Uh, this is what I try uh, or I understand on the cultural aspect. We did that in the kind of uh, biggest uh, aspect of gaming. Um, we you know, announced and, and published this video. And this is not so bad, and this is not really good, but 60,000 people watched this video actually. And uh, uh, for us, kind of as a feedback, a lot of people thought that was funny, and uh, made lots of jokes about Zimon, which is, for me personally, a really good feedback. So, <laughs> this is a really bad example, and um, I'm really happy that we have experts here <laughs> today who will explain uh, more detail what this could be about. But um, there's a huge... Uh, um, there is a, this, this is all about gaming itself, so, but there are, um, and you all know that, uh, certain uh, differences between gaming in general and digital games. So uh, when we talk about games right now, everyone thinks about the big games out there, or maybe indie titles, but as well, just video gaming and computer gaming. And um, just to give you another example, so uh, this is Jenga, everyone knows Jenga. This is kind of, yeah, you take wood and you play with wood, actually. So this is just a normal game, not digital. And um, you can use it, you can just play, you can have fun with it. Then you can kind of modify Jenga by, you know, replacing the little tiny blocks to really huge blocks. You could even take hot dogs and play Jenga with hot dogs. So, so you, even in the real world, you do uh, have the possibility to modify this. In a digital game, stuff like uh, the, the amount of blocks doesn't count. You can create your own huge gaming. So this is the main kind of uh, point. You could even kind of uh, build a game where uh, a Jenga man would run away and you have to try to pick up blocks while he was running and stuff like that. So, and you can create just by, with the same kind of game design rules, you could create something really, really good. Okay. So right now, um, 
I'd like to uh, make a negative example of game design, and I tried to use PowerPoint as a kind of a game engine, which is really bad. And I need someone, <laughs> please, um, to take this presenter with a laser pointer, and uh, I built this game. It's called Catastrophe. And um, I need someone in the first round, please. Al, would you like to? Yeah? <laughs> so this is, um, you got to push the red button. Just oh. sit down there. Hold on tight. So, and this, as I said, uh, this is kind of, I worked really hard on that. <coughs> and uh, the main goal, Al, for you is to uh, uh, kind of escape from the grumpy cat. All right? So please put your uh, laser pointer in the start box. All right? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. And uh, there you go. Try to. <laughs> Have you imagined that PowerPoint could do this? It's really good, isn't it? So this is kind of a digital game, or this is kind of a mixture from, you know, digital gaming and kind of real world gaming, right? So Al is really trying to... Yeah, keep care, Al. This is really getting messful. Where are you? Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Al. You... Sorry to be uh, that direct. You suck. <laughs> As I said, uh, I would love to be a game designer, but I'm too bad in that. But uh, this is just for your understanding. So that was kind of a digital game, but it was a really lame digital game. Okay, so and we got people here who can work out really good games, who are real game designers, who understand what it's about to create video games, to create uh, interactivity, to uh, create something that really is not like that. <laughs> okay, so and therefore, I would love to, uh, I hope you got a glimpse. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what I've talked about, but um, I know for sure that there's uh, someone else here and he's doing the keynote and I'm really honored that he's here. And uh, he will definitely could explain way better what game design is all about. And I think we will start the whole conference thing after this with uh, Eric Zimmerman. And um, so for my part, thank you very much.